The purpose of this lesson is to revise uh, the basics of complex numbers. So you, you will recall that a complex number is often given uh, the, the name Z. Z equals A plus BI is the standard form of a, of a complex number. Now A and B are real numbers. Uh, I is the imaginary part of the complex number but we say this part the A here we say is the real part and the BI we say is the imaginary part. Now um, even though A and B themselves are real numbers. Now just a reminder as well what I is. I comes from the fact that I squared equals negative 1 and so therefore I equals the square root of negative 1 which otherwise everything that we've done in maths up until this point uh, we haven't had a solution for uh, the square root of a negative number. Now we define it as the square root of negative 1 as I. Alright, so what does a complex number look like uh, when we graph it? Uh, just that uh, before we graph a complex number, you remember a real number we can actually graph just on a number line. So here's 0, 1, 2, so we might graph the real number 2 might just be a single point on a number line. However, for a complex number, we graph a complex number on what we call the argand plane. Now the argand plane is similar to the Cartesian plane, except our two, two axes this is what we call real z or our real axis and this the vertical one is our imaginary axis. Now um, if I was to give a specific example if I was to um, plot uh, z equals 4 plus 3i then in order to do that we would come 4 on the real axis 4 is the real part so 1, 2, 3, 4 come to 4 there and we'd go up to 3 um, the scale doesn't really matter but this might be 3 and so there would be the point um, z equals 4 plus 3i. Alright, if we were to sketch uh, one more we might do z equals negative 2 minus i. So negative 2 minus i, negative 2 is the real part so we'd go to negative 2 on the real axis and down 1 on the imaginary axis. So down 1, once again, I'm not too worried about the scale. Down 1 would be there. This would be z equals negative 2 take away i. Something important to note is that the numbers, our scale on the imaginary axis, just has the real component um, labelled. In other words, we don't put the I as part of it. The I is assumed when we say it's the imaginary axis. Now, what we've been talking about are complex numbers in the form Z equals A plus BI. By the way, in some books you will see that um, standard form could also be written as Z equals X plus YI. Uh, same thing, just different um, variables used. All of these are what we call standard form. Other names you'll hear for it are Cartesian form and rectangular form. So they're common names that we use for this form of a complex number. The reason I make a point of that is because in our next lesson we'll actually look at um, complex numbers in what we call polar form. Now before we go on, just as part of our revision, uh, let's just remind ourselves about some of the operations uh, of complex numbers. First of all, the conjugate. And you should remember the, the symbol Z with a bar on top. That means conjugate. Um, the conjugate of Z, if Z equals A plus BI, the conjugate of Z would be A minus BI. So the conjugate is simply the um, opposite sign for the imaginary part. So this here we call the conjugate. Now interestingly if you, actually, if you have a look at the Argan plane, here we've got um, z equals 4 plus 3i. The conjugate of that particular example would be 4 minus 3i. 
<coughs> which if we look where we plot it, 4 minus 3i, the real component's still the same, but the imaginary part will be down 3. So you'd be down here somewhere. Uh, so this would be z conjugate. And in fact, every time you do the conjugate, if you think about it, it's going to be basically reflected across the real axis. If it was a minus 3i to begin with, then the conjugate would become a plus 3i and it would go up to here. So conjugate complex numbers are basically opposite each other across the, across the real axis. Okay, so the first operation we've talked about there is, is conjugate. Uh, the next one uh, that we want to look at is uh, addition of complex numbers and um, rather than give you the actual mathematical rules I thought we maybe we'd do just a couple of examples. So for all these examples let's call z equals um, 4 plus 3i, we've already done that, and let's say w, another complex number, might be equal to negative 2 um, plus uh, 2i. So if I was going to add these two complex numbers, if I was going to go z plus w, then I'm going 4 plus 3i plus negative 2 plus 2i. Now when we're adding complex numbers, we add real parts together and we add imaginary parts together. The bottom line is, is we can't, it's like adding and subtracting like terms with algebra. So our real parts, we've got 4 take away 2, which will be 2, and we've got 3i plus 2i would give us 5i. So that's adding complex numbers. Next one we'll look at is scalar multiplication. So as an example, uh, let's consider um, 3z. 3 times z, 3 is the scalar, it's multiplying the complex number z. So that's really 3 times 4 lots of, oh sorry, 4 plus 3i. The scalar multiplying the complex number equals, and in this case it's just like the distributive law in, in algebra, 3 4s are 12 plus 3 3s are 9i. Next thing we'll look at is actually multiplying um, two complex numbers together. So this was just a scalar multiplied by a complex number. Let's consider multiplying two together. In other words, let's try z times w. z times w will be 4 plus 3i multiplied by w negative 2 plus 2i. So we treat this just like we would algebra, distributive law uh, expanding out two brackets. So every term multiplies every other term. So the 4 times the negative 2, negative 8. 4 multiplied by 2i will be 8i. Th then we go this one. 3i times negative 2 will be negative 6i. 3i times 2i, positive times a positive, will be a positive. 3 twos are 6i squared. The i times the i becomes an i squared. Really important because you remember back up here, we said that i squared was equal to negative 1. So down here, we're going to have negative 8. We collect these like terms. 8i minus 6i will be 2i. And plus 6 times negative 1. i squared is negative 1. So that actually becomes negative 6 which then we can simplify negative 8 takes 6 negative 14 plus 2i. So there is the multiplication of two complex numbers. The last example that we'll look at um, is, is the inverse. And this is basically what we would also use when we're doing the um, dividing complex numbers. Um, so the inverse uh, is really what we're saying 1 over z. Okay, z is the complex number, the inverse of that is 1 over z, which is really, uh, from our example, z was equal to 4 plus 3i. So 1 over 4 plus 3i. That's a bit tricky uh, to do um, in terms of simplifying this because we need to write it as um, in standard form, which is the a plus bi, 4 
form. We want to get it to look like this, not with the eye down on the bottom. So what we use a trick here, uh, and it relies on some maths you would have done much earlier in high school. So we'll take 1 over 4 plus 3i, and we know that with fractions, whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom, and we won't have changed the value of the fraction. Now, I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 4 minus 3i, the conjugate. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm now going to get, you may remember, a plus b, a minus b, difference of two squares. We'll follow that in just a second. So I multiply top and bottom by 4 minus 3i. Effectively, these cancel out, and I haven't changed the, the problem, the, the value of the the question at all, but this is a different format that will be useful. So now on the top I've got 1 multiplied by 4 minus 3i, that's clearly going to be 4 minus 3i, doesn't change. On the bottom I've got 4 plus 3i and 4 minus 3i. Now the rule that we're going to be using, and I'll just write it out the side here, you may recall from year 9 or 10 a minus b, a plus b. If you actually expand this out the long way, you get a squared um, plus ab minus ab minus b squared. Now, this ab and minus ab in the middle, because one's a minus and one's a plus, and everything else is identical, these two will always cancel each other out. Plus ab minus ab equals zero. So you're left with a squared minus b squared, which we call the difference, difference being negative, the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. So the whole reason we, coming back to this problem, the whole reason we multiplied by the 4 minus 3i is so that we got a difference of two squares on the bottom here. 4 plus 3i, 4 minus 3i, just like the, the a minus b, a plus b. So the top stays the same and the bottom, yeah we could expand it out the long way, 4 4's are 16, in fact I might as well do that and you'll see how we could shortcut in future. 4 4's are 16, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12i, 3i times 4 is plus 12i, and 3i times negative 3i is negative 9i squared. Now as we showed up here, the AB and the minus AB cancel. Here you've got negative 12i plus 12i. Because it's a difference of two squares, they will always cancel. So normally we would just shortcut to A squared, which would be 4 squared, which is 16, minus this one squared, the B squared, like we had over here. The, that thing squared would be 9i squared. But we can take this one step further with complex numbers because we know that i squared is negative 1. So the top stays the same, the bottom becomes 16 plus now because 9 times negative 1, negative 9 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 9. Gives us 4 minus 3i over 25. Or to write it in standard form like I showed up here, uh, that's really, if we wanted to, 4 over 25 minus 3 over 25i. And that's now in A plus BI form, which is standard form. So those are the basic operations. We did um, addition, scalar multiplication, multiplication of two complex numbers, the, and the inverse and using the uh, conjugate to, to help us with that. So in the next lesson, uh, we'll look at uh, the polar form of complex numbers and why they might be useful.